Gunston Hall, a National Historic Landmark in Virginia, was home to one of the lesser-known founding fathers, George Mason. Up next on American Artifacts, we visit the property along the Potomac River to learn about his political life and his time as a slave owner on the 5,000-acre plantation. He drafted the 1776 Virginia Declaration of Rights, was a delegate to the Federal Convention in Philadelphia, but refused to sign the Constitution because it did not include a Bill of Rights. So the space that we're walking into right now is George Mason's office. It was also a little bit of a multi multifunctional room because during George Mason's lifetime, this space was also a dining room for his family when they didn't have formal guests so that were, they were meeting in the, uh, the public side of the house. But it was also a space where his sons, who served as copyists, this is in the days before copy machines, they're doing all the copying of George Mason's writing by hand. One of his younger sons, John, remembers being in this space with his father when he got lost among his work papers, being that sort of a copyist person. This is my favorite room in the house as well, because while it was Mason's office, this is definitely where a lot of the ideas that we see in the Virginia Declaration of Rights and in the Constitution that Mason proposed, this is where they happen. We know that from John. We know that from a letter that George Mason wrote in 1787. He wrote that he wanted some papers from his desk, but we know he was thinking about things that were in the Constitution here in this space. Now, George Mason doesn't write any of those documents here. As you may know, in 1776, he gets invited to go down to the Virginia Convention in Williamsburg, and he gets there just a little bit late. He's not super excited about traveling. Uh, he finds he's been assigned to a committee to write a Declaration of Rights for Virginia. He very, very quickly gets fed up with the rest of the committee and decides he's kind of done with them. So he takes himself off to Raleigh Tavern down the street and writes this beautiful document that states that all men are by nature equally free and independent and have certain inherent rights, among which are life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness and safety, the pursuing and possessing of property. Might sound a little familiar. The first draft of this document ends up in a newspaper in Philadelphia about the time Thomas Jefferson is drafting the Declaration of Independence. We don't know, but we think it's possible that this might have had some influence on Jefferson's writing of the Declaration. We think here at Gunston Hall that it is really important that those George Mason owned people. He also opened the door for us to continue to have the conversation 250 years later. And he opened the door for us to expand to whom the Virginia Declaration of Rights applied. In the 18th century, it wouldn't have applied to me. It might not have applied to you. But today, because 250 years later, we've continued to have this conversation, it does apply to all of us. And I think that's very special and very important and why we still talk about George Mason the way we do today.